Hey everybody, this is David with Think Make Push. Now, I know what you're thinking. This obviously is not the typical video that I upload every week. I wanted to do something just a little bit different this week. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me and comment about how I make these overlays. And so I wanted to make a video dedicated to that process, to show you the process of what I go through uh, to make these videos, these film overlays that you can use in your content. Uh, towards the end of the video, if you want to, uh, at the very end, uh, stick around because I'll kind of introduce myself a little bit more and talk about the focus or the vision that I have for this channel moving forward. So I hope that you will stay towards the end of the video to learn more about that. But before we get into any of that, let's get into the process of how I make these film overlays for you. Okay, so the first thing I typically do whenever I make a new film overlay is I like to start with a good foundation or a good base. And so I'll go on eBay and look up some vintage film that I can buy. And whenever I'm searching eBay, I'm always looking for several different things uh, whenever it comes to film. I look for grungy looking film. You know, I don't want anything that's super nice or uh, in pristine condition. Pretty much the more beat up or the more rugged the film looks, that's the kind of film that I'm wanting. And so I'll go through a lot of different listings on eBay before I decide on which one I'm going to buy. So whenever the package comes in the mail, then I, of course, check it out and I see exactly what I got. And I'll check it for different imperfections and just kind of see all the damage that's in there. And I go through the film and just look for pieces of it that I think would be good for a film overlay. And so after looking it over and finding some good spots that I'm going to scan, then I'll go ahead and set up my light. And I actually just take pictures of the film because I don't even own a flatbed scanner. So I just use my phone and I use one of those little attachments that kind of clip over the uh, the lens so that way I can get like a macro shot and so that way I can get really close to the film and uh, see all those little imperfections, see all those little details on the film. And you know there's really nothing special about this process, there's nothing really that technical about it. I just go through the film and just take pictures of everything that I think looks cool. Once I've got some good pictures taken of the film, now comes the part whenever I create the actual light leaks uh, that I use. The part that, you know, looks like whenever the film was exposed to the outside light. I want to stress that this next part, very technical. There's a lot of thought that goes into the process of making these light leaks. Not really. <laughs> So basically, I just use the flashlight on my phone and just shine it into the body of the camera. And that's all it is. That's literally all I do. Now sometimes I'll experiment and I'll use different things or different materials like this crystal glass. That kind of gives different variations to the light. And yeah, that's what I do to create the light leaks. So after I've scanned the film and shot the video of the light leaks, now comes the most time consuming part of the whole process. And that of course is the editing. And to edit everything, I typically use After Effects because you can really get down to the detail and you can make it do exactly what you want. Uh, but after I import all of the elements, then I basically just mask out the parts that I want to use. Typically, I only use the edges of the film, you know, the part that has the cool lettering and the detail and the sprocket holes along the edges. And after I get it how I want, then I'll work with the light leaks that I made. And after that, it's really just a matter of putting it all together. It's just a matter of timing, you know, to make sure things fit together and look good together. And whenever I edit, I typically use a lot of expressions in After Effects to get it to look how I want. And then, you know, again, it's just tweaking and changing and playing with the overlays and making it look exactly how I want it to. And, you know, there's been a lot of times when I've worked on a particular overlay for hours. And then by the end of it, I hated how it looked. So I scrapped the project and started completely over again. After it renders, it's just getting it on the website, putting in a nice package for you all to download. And of course, uploading it and adding it to YouTube. And that's it. That's the process of how I make overlays for you each and every week. Uh, this process, you know, it takes anywhere from just a few hours to maybe five or six hours. So it really just depends on the complexity 
uh, the things that I want to add in there. Sometimes I'll get a lot more involved and add some, you know, dust or some scratches and uh, several different layers of film overlays to make it look really cool. But this is just the basic method of how I make these film overlays for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. I do want to take just a second to ask, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, you know, like I said, this is a different video than what I usually make. Normally I upload a new film overlay or a new uh, film element every single week, but this one's kind of different. And I hope if you're not subscribed that you do take a second to hit the subscribe button. Also turn on the notification uh, so whenever I upload a new video, you'll be alerted of that. But now a little bit about myself for those who are interested. Uh, like I said, my name is David and I've been into video as a hobby for several years. Uh, ever since I was, you know, a little kid, I've been interested in video. But within the last couple of years, I've really been starting to get into these film elements and these overlays and light leaks. And you know, it all started uh, for me several years ago whenever I was looking for a way to make my videos look vintage or, or just to have a, a, a vintage feel to them. And so, of course, I would go online and I would look in the film community and I'd try to get ideas and everything. And I felt like I got a lot of good ideas. I got a lot of good help from the online community, from uh, other filmmakers or other content creators. And, you know, I felt like I was always taking information from these people. I was always taking uh, new information from the internet, but I was never contributing. I was never giving back to that. And so what I did was I created a light leak. I created a film overlay and I uploaded it to YouTube and I just let the public have it. And, and I didn't really think much about it after that. Uh, but you know, that one video, it started getting hundreds of thousands of views. Uh, and then I've even started getting comments about how that, that one overlay has helped so many people, how it's really added to their their um, workflow and how that's added to their final product. And a lot of people started asking for more overlays and they started asking for different kinds of overlays and they started giving me suggestions on things that they would like me to produce. And so that's kind of how I started with that. Uh, and I, I really enjoy it. You know, it's kind of almost become like an art form to me. It's, it's something that I really enjoy creating and, and making new and original overlays every week. And so I don't have any plans on stopping and, and I look forward to what I can make in the future. But hopefully this short little video has been just enough to introduce myself to you. Uh, hopefully we can make a better connection and, and we can start to build this community and start to build up this channel a little bit of people who enjoy stuff like this. And I hope that you'll leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this video. Uh, obviously, being in front of the camera is not something that I'm great at. It's not something that I really enjoy, but I did uh, see the importance of connecting with you and to introducing myself. And so I hope it's been beneficial and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Anyway, I hope you have a great week. I hope you continue to use the overlays that I make. And again, if you ever have any questions about how to use them, if there's any kind of overlay that you specifically want, shoot me an email, send me a comment, send me a message and let me know. And I'll be sure to put that on my to-do list of, of overlays to make. So appreciate you watching. Have a great day.